There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fangirl Zone. I am Sean Fangirl S, and today we are talking dirt gently, and so that means my host, co-host is my usual, normal, awesome co-host, Jess. Hello. That was a pretty good build-up for you. That really was. I don't think I've ever gotten an intro like that. That was pretty great. <laughs> we are talking Dirk Gently Season 2, Episode 4, The House Within a House. Boy, does that not sound like it should be some Houseception. <laughs> Something creepy. As our team's investigation leads to a startling discovery... Discovering the long-abandoned Cardenas homestead, Bart and Panto forge an unlikely and unusual relationship. In Windemore, Amanda takes steps towards understanding the powers that are hidden within her. Meanwhile, in Blackwing, Ken continues to undermine Friedkin. Does he undermine him? I was wondering that same thing. When I saw that, that synopsis, I was like, I didn't think he was undermining him. I thought he was just... I thought he was kind of helping him, but Friedkin is just kind of too So calm. stupid to take, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Because we're in Windemore, and there's guards around a fire, and two people in, like, cages. Very, very, uh, like, Robin Hood. Yes. And one of the guards gets mad because another one was questioning the mage, and he says, nobody questions the mage. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like dictatorship, but, you know, whatever. But, hey, what happens? Amanda and Vogue will pop up in a lake, and not just any lake, because Amanda looks up and sees that weird moon that we were talking Ooh, about, episode guy's one. face, yeah. Yeah, it's very Soul Eater moon. Okay. If you've never seen that anime, it looks like the same. So, they are obviously... Not in not, Kansas anymore. No. Not in Montana anymore. Windemore. So that's interesting. How did they cross over? That should be a big thing because somehow whatever or whomever was helping them out of the motel with the water. Perhaps it was a shapeshifter, but if that's the case, how does she get them to Windemore? That just seems very odd. Very strange. But hey, guess what? We're going back to the farmhouse because Dirk just can't stay away. Can't leave it alone. Well, he, he goes in the room, and he looks in a closet, and, hey, look it, there's a fun slide-looking thing. Let's go down it. But he starts, like, stretching, because it's one of those, like, twisty slide, tunnel slides. So he kind of, like, stretching down to look, and, well, oops, he goes all the way down. Right. Hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have done that by yourself. Just a thought. But, you know, Dirk's kind of impulsive. What That's are you going to do? Oh, Hey. Let's go out. Let's go and find out how Susie's freaking out, shall we? She goes back. Well, we're back at her house, and her son. Oh, oh, big surprise, being a douchebag. And so she like kind of freaks out, yells at him, and he's like, "Whatever, mom." Like really, basically. Well, that's about it with them for a few, at least. I don't know. I'm expecting things to get better, and like her to zap her kid or something, right? Because her husband's just in the corner, like, standing there, looking crazy. Zombified still. Yeah. Don't know what's happening with him and if anything's going to change. But the sheriff's department gets a call about the missing book club. That's odd. Susie was at that book club. So where did they go? What did she do? Mm Mm-hmm. Are they toads? Are they jumping around? Maybe she turned them into newts. I don't know what a newt is, but maybe that's what it is. Could be. (laughs) Todd wakes up, because apparently he's hanging out with the sheriff at his his place, and Dirk is not on his pallet of blankets and pillows. And so he goes to wake up the sheriff, and he's like, what? Huh? And all of it, because he's like, why is this here? Talking about that, we're going to call it the air gun, because that's what yeah. it is. Well, and this sheriff is not, I mean, he's not like one of those guys who rolls out of bed and he's ready for the day. <laughs> he is out of it. He doesn't seem to understand what's going on. So he's like me. 
and and all like Todd's trying to do is like communicate the gravity of the situation. He's like, eh. It was fantastic. Oh, because then all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, I should probably mark that into evidence, huh? Okay, great job. Maybe get out of bed. Let's start with that. But Bart walks back in. Where the hell has Bart been? With a big thing of donuts, yeah. right? Like, isn't this where she has the donuts? Which is yes, hilarious. because she, she does, she's like, hey, are you hungry? Here. And gives him a donut. And because uh, he's like, oh, you're the only one who's been nice to me. She's like, eh, I'm, I'm just hungry. And he's like, can you open my cell? And she's like, no, just mine didn't work. And then she goes back into her cell, closes it, and sits there. And proceeds to eat the rest of the donut. Well, and he's like, he's like, you're the first person who's been nice to me. And they're talking and chatting. And he makes, he, and she's totally calling him on it. She's like, those are just sounds you're making. Like, that's not, <laughs> those aren't real words. I love it so much. Like, Bart with the real questions. Well, because it, it does sound weird. Because he is saying all these words like, I... Could not even write them down. No, it's like, making sense. Uh, words. I'm stuff, pretty sure things. my uh, my closed captioning that I listen to almost everything that's that has a British person I put closed captioning on because they talk so fast sometimes that I miss jokes. Mm-hmm. I love jokes. I'm pretty sure my closed captioning didn't even catch it. <laughs> so all the weird words. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny. Uh, we head back to Windermore for a moment. Because the guards have caught Amanda Vogel and locked them up, saying that she's a witchy cuckoo. What What the hell is a witchy cuckoo? (laughs) Maybe that's that weird animalistic looking woman that was in there. Right, I don't know. With the weird hair and the, yeah, crazy. Yeah, the weird marks on her face. We're back in the real world and Todd and Hobbs are talking as they're headed to the house, the farmhouse, to try to find Dirk. And he he gets asked, well, how did Amanda get involved? And he admits, and I was kind of surprised he admitted right away, that he was faking the disease at first, and then, then he got it. And Hobbs. Oh, Hobbs. So great. He just reaches over, and he kind of, like, squeezes his shoulders, like, it's okay. You told the truth. It's good. It's like, is it, though? He's like, he's like probably not what I would have done in this situation. <laughs> Like, it probably didn't hurt, didn't help you in the long run. Right. But that's the decision you made. Good job. But you owned it. Yeah. You owned it. Okay. (laughs) They get to the farmhouse, they go inside, and suddenly that weird red phone that wasn't working rings. And on the other end of the phone is Dirk saying, I'm in the house. (laughs) Okay, that's not a horror movie. Where are you in the house? He's like, well, it's like another house, but it's the house. It's like... What? And it's all festive looking? Yeah, there's like, it's very uh, Christmas meets like Willy Wonka meets Dr. Seuss. I was thinking it was very much like, oh gosh, what was that? Was it The Outer Limits or Twilight Zone? I think it was the Twilight Zone movie where like everybody's in this house and they're, they always have to be happy and it's always the little girl's birthday because she has powers and if they're not happy and smiling all the time... Like, she zaps him into oblivion. And I'm like, oh my gosh. He's already in oblivion. Right, exactly. So what's going to happen? Because he's like, I don't know where I am because I opened the door and there's nothing outside. He's like, what do you mean there's nothing? He's like, it's static. And that's when it got creepy and it had that Twilight Zone feel. Well, and I feel like he didn't even describe it very... I would have said, listen, do you know what I'm talking about when I say television static? That's what I'm seeing out the door. That's outside. That's what it is. Oh, my God. So weird. It was creepy. And it had a weird reflection then inside. Mm-hmm. So it was so weird. But uh, we're back at Blackwing then. So give us a moment to process what's happening with Dirk. So we go to Blackwing, and Ken's like, there's tens of thousands of pages of information that I'm decrypting on this old computer. And that was an old freaking computer. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, look at that computer. <laughs> That reminded me of, like, a word processor that we were first learning to type on way back in grade school. Right. Yes. I actually learned to type. I know. Most people don't know what that is, because if I ask anybody in an interview, what's your typing speed, they have no clue what the hell I'm talking about. Oh, see, I don't know my my typing speed. I know how to type, but I feel like the last time I was tested, it was, like, 40 words per minute, which is not impressive. Oh, I think it's 65, so... But, uh, and then, you know, Ken's talking to Friedkin, who is laid out on the floor. Because apparently he's really stressed. Maybe he's doing some whoosha. You know, whoosha. 
<laughs> relaxing. And I love it. He's like, what did you think was going to happen when you had these people? Did you think that you were going to be able to suddenly turn them into super soldiers? And Friedkin's like, uh, sort of. It's like, oh, you're such an idiot. He's like, what happened? And it actually, like, he spills the beans and he tells them everything. Which surprised the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Like, I wasn't expecting him to actually own up and tell them everything that happened. Right. So, that was a surprise. Um, We're back with (laughs) Dirk. And this was cracking me up. Just because Jess and I happened to be talking about this earlier, too. That Dirk's like, I think I'm in Judeo-Christian hell. Right. It's very strange. And uh, that's a turn of events. Uh, It's like, um, how did you get down there? He's like, a slide. He's like, can you climb up? He's like, there's no hole anymore. Right, yeah. I came through the slide. I came through the, the, the ceiling or whatever. And then the hole disappeared. But at this point, Todd goes to look for the... The slide. Right. And Hobbs is on the phone with him, and he's yelling dumb questions and yelling. And I love it. So then, as Todd's like, can you climb up? And Dirk tells Hobbs this, and he's like, oh, that's a hard no. I love that. <laughs> okay. It's like, that's great. This interaction with them was just cracking me up. And the more that Dirk started talking, and he started walking, like, the phone cord kept going up. Because it wasn't a cordless phone. I'm like, how long is this damn phone cord? It was it was crazy. And then by the time that, like, you're really, like, paying attention to it, it's, like, going like a freaking wh- spider web yeah, throughout the like hallway. Yeah, it was, like, a total Scooby-Doo thing, it's for real, though. crazy. It was great. Um, and we start getting hints of something's chasing him. Right? Yeah. So this is about when that happens. Yeah. Well, first we have Amanda, who's talking to the person she's locked up with. And we find out that's Trout's brother. Oh, okay. And he's telling the story... And we have, at the same time, Trouse telling Bart the story, which turns out to be the story of the prophecy. And it's like back and forth, and I love it because Bart's just sitting there eating chips the whole time. Because that's totally me. But just to have this happening at the same time, this concurrent event, Mm -hmm. like in the two different realms with these two different women, and they're both looking at the brothers like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I actually kind of like the way they did it. Yeah, no, it was really good. Yeah, I just loved it because you had them. So, like, everybody in this realm knows the story, and everybody in our realm doesn't have a clue what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. So, I I noticed, too, that the house that Dirk is in is bigger on the inside. So, obviously, it's Time Lord technology. Clearly. Clearly. BBC, and, I mean, they do love their Time Lord technology. That's right. And so did Douglas Adams, since he wrote a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. But, uh... We don't know what's happening. We just know he's walking around, and this co- this cord is like the never-ending phone cord. It was hilarious. It was amazing. Uh, and then he walks into a room with a bed and a TV, and like the TV keeps changing channels, and it kind of is telling a story. I don't well, know if you saw, noticed well, no, it. Like, saw, I, I, I noticed how much, much of it was like similar to things that were happening, right? Like the n- weird nights. Yes. And that's why I, I, I'm like, okay, it's telling a story. I wonder if it's kind of going along, because this is at the same time the brothers are telling a story. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if this is kind of like that realm telling the story to Dirk, right. but Dirk not paying close enough attention to it. Now, is this is this the point when Dirk finds the uh, the scissors stuck into the table and they're oh, not yet. blood? He starts hearing music. Oh, okay. And as it gets closer, we figure out the music is one-eyed, one horn, flying purple people. Which here. I must, okay, I must have subconsciously realized that far before the song made itself really, really well, clear. Well, it start, yeah, because it started really slow. So you can hear it if you were listening. Because because immediately when we saw the creature that was tailing, mm-hmm. uh, and I saw, like, the, the claws and just the purple skin of the hand, I'm like... It's a one-eyed, one-eyed, one horn flying purple people. I'm like, it's a pr- purple people eater. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, that makes no sense. What am I doing? No, yeah, because no, no. it started so to talk about it really slowly. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. I, yeah, my brain got it before. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously not the boy. No, that's not the boy. <laughs> but back in reality, you have Amanda. I'm sorry, not Amanda. Uh, the book club. Farah and Tina 
that there's four piles of sand at the book club, but there's five wine glasses. There. Well, and there's all this jewelry, like, you oh, know, yes. someone sells what wedding rings, someone sells watches Watch. right there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was very, like, not good. I love it because they're like, well, you know, Farah doesn't know anything about the town. So she's like, well, who would know these people? Who would be part of the book club that would be the fifth person that's not here? And Tina's like, Susie, Susie knows them. So this is, again, I'm reiterating how small this freaking town is. Right. She's like, she knows all those women. And so off to Susie's house they go. And Susie is studying the book. And suddenly there's quiet. And she goes to look for her kid. Why? If there's quiet at that point, just be like, all right. If I don't smell smoke at this point, we're probably okay. He's not burning down the house. But suddenly Susie's husband comes out with her kid's phone that she had kind of recorded uh, what the mage was doing. And suddenly it was different. Because the mage is like, I'll see you soon. It's like, oh my god, that would freak me out too. Absolutely, that was Something terrible. I had already recorded and it changed. And I would be, like, probably screaming. Well, and that just gives you a little hint of, like, the fact that the mage still has power even in our world. Yes. Which was very intriguing to me. Well, he, like, disappeared some dead bodies, so I figured he had to have some power anyway. Yeah, Yeah. there's all kinds of stuff going on. So we're back in the other, other, other realm. The house realm. And, like I said, Dirk is doing his Scooby-Doo thing with the phone cord going in and out of rooms and up and down hallways. (laughs) And it's like... What the heck? And it just... I half expected, like, a door to open and, like, Scooby to stick his head out and then close. Right. That would have just been great. Mm. Licensing issues. Whatever. Of course. <laughs> or the monkeys. How they used to do that. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, but this is where he sees the table bleeding with a pair of scissors in it. It's like, okay, is the table supposed to be that shapeshifter then? That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, my gosh. What is going on? Because it was so creepy. Well, of course we hear Todd, or Dirk freaking out, so Todd's like, I'm going in! And he goes and he goes down the slide and ends up in a bedroom that has, like, a western theme, so I was thinking he wasn't even in the same house. Okay. And I was like, oh god, where did he end up? So I was, like, kind of, kind of freak out. But, it's not. He is in the house. And he ends up grabbing Dirk and turn, after he ran into all of the spiderweb-like, you know, phone cord (laughs) that went on forever, grabs Dirk and grabs the scissors. Why did he grab the scissors? Uh, the only weapon they have, I guess? But no, because he took the gun in. He took the air gun in with him, didn't he? He did. And he did use it, which all it did was kind of like back up the monster a little bit. And I love it. He's like, what is that? He's like, I don't know. So they end up, well, they're kind of in the kitchen and there's like one way out, either into the house where the monster is basically right there standing or out the door, which is into static. Todd grabs him and he's like, okay, we're going this way, out the door. I did not know what was going to happen, if they were going to end up in or... Who knew? In, yeah, like, I know. Oblivion. But they made it back into reality. They're out by the barn, right? Uh, yeah, the side... Of, well, the side of the house. So oh, between okay. the barn and the house. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden he starts having, like, a fit, an episode, and he sees Amanda. And Amanda's having an attack, and she's getting all weird, like... Sparks out of her hands. Yeah, like yeah. sparks and stuff. But they're able to see each other in this moment. Mm-hmm. And, not, and not anything else. He can't see the other people that are in that cage with her. Right, she he, sees, he sees the cage in her, and she sees him, but she sees Dirk, too. I don't remember if she sees Dirk or not. Or maybe, maybe. It, just, it was the point of view. Maybe. That's probably just the POV then. But yes, so they're able to see each other, but they don't know why. And so Todd's freaking out, and then he has like a serious episode. And Well, it seemed like he was having the same kind of pain that she was, almost. Like, yeah. They were almost sharing that kind of episode, and then she's, like, sort of wakes up, and she realizes that it's she's not imagining this. This is actually, like, other people are seeing what she's seeing, yes, too. Yes, because the guy with Which her, he's cute. like, you said you weren't a witchy cuckoo. You were all lit up. And she's like, wait a minute, you seen that? Right. So, whatever it is, maybe it's something in this reality that it is, like, magic powers as opposed to in their reality, which is just something god-awful. Right, exactly. But we have, we go back to Blackwing with Ken, and he's getting more information and trying to help Friedkin get this information. He's just like, you were in way over your head. And he's like, well, yeah. So I love that, that, Ken, that uh, Ken's not the first person who told him this. Yeah, Friedkin's just like, I know this. This isn't weird to me. 
So that's how we see of them. But at least Ken and Rapunzel are not in the taxi. That's how I'm looking right. at it. Agreed. So yay them. <laughs> uh, we're back at Susie's house, which Farah and Tina tried to go knock on the door. Nothing was happening. And suddenly they get a call about, well, Tina misunderstood and said, there's a purple alligator. Come on, we need to go see the purple alligator. Susie will be here later. We're fine. As Susie and the mage are basically having a magic fight inside. Right. Which kind of... I'm glad to have missed that. Yeah. (laughs) As they leave, because, hey, we got ideas, because everything's connected. Let's go. But Dirk is so at a loss because of everything that's happened. And I think he's just stressed out and thinking about it too much. And and Dirk's trying to tell Todd, all I ever wanted was a friend, someone who believed in me. What if I get you killed? And again, they have that That's a re- No, there's a really good... I mean, there's a really good moment between them where he's like, you know, when we jumped through that, we had no idea what was going to happen. And, you know, I don't... I don't feel like I'm comfortable risking your life, basically. Which was like, it's huge for him because usually he's like running into things half-cocked, doesn't right. notice anything. Totally, totally like, you know totally ignorant of the danger. Like, think about, like, last season with the room with all the lights in it, and they're almost getting, like, electrocuted. Right. And Todd's like, are you kidding me? And he's like, you, did you die? <laughs> like, it's it's a total shift for them in their relationship. It's really interesting. Yeah, and I thought it was kind of interesting, the fact that, you know, Dirk's like, all I've ever wanted was a friend. Because we don't really know too much about his childhood, other than he was stuck in Blackwing. Exactly. So... I thought that was, again, something telling that, you know, he didn't get to have a normal childhood. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. So, I'm like, oh, it's sweet. But Todd's like, we are friends. We're doing this. Right. Everything's connected. (laughs) Well, before we go back to Windermere, let's talk about the mage and Susie, who finally stopped fighting. And he's talking to her, and he's like, "Listen, I made a second one, a second one, because I knew I was going to need help. I needed somebody else who can rule, who can reign beside me as queen." And she's like, "Hmm, okay, tell me more." It's, it was very, very the devil on your shoulder because he was, he's basically saying, "Okay, you know, you could give that to me, and you could just go back to your regular life." And she's like, "I'm not. Uh, you can pry it from my cold dead fingers, basically." <laughs> Um, and he's offering her, you know, this life of, you know, basically, you know, power and, you know, prestige and whatever she wants. It's, you know, it's, yeah, everything that she's and he even said, he, he even said something about, you know, it shows you for a reason. Right. Like, you're not, a, you're good not person. a good person. She's like, I'm a good person. No, you're not. You just killed four people that you know, that you yeah. grew up with. It's like, ooh. Like, you weren't supposed to notice that part. Yeah. Well, and that's, I'm sure, just part of her, you know, we all we all believe whatever we're, we're doing is the right thing to do. It's, you know, mm-hmm. so, but yeah. yeah, no, she's wrong. She just so, killed a bunch of people. I mean, I'm going back here, but it actually ends with him saying, you can be queen. All you have to do is kill Dirk gently. It's like, wow. I mean, actually vocalized it. I didn't expect them right. to say that. Even though all the killing's happening left and right. Yeah. It's not, like, intentional necessarily. Mm-hmm. Although I don't think he accidentally killed the boss with the pen. Right. So. Well, and I don't think she, she thought she was doing anything nice when she turned them all into dirt. Right. So we go back with the Scooby gang. Okay. And they had taken Trouse to the house because they are trying to figure out how he got there. Since they know how to get in through the slide, but didn't know how they got out. And he's like, oh, I came out through here. I fell on a bed. And turns out there's a Murphy bed. So as they're talking to him and how he fell through a wall and they're trying to figure it out, it's like, hey, there's water damage. What could this be? What could that? Dirk starts pulling the wallpaper because apparently he's destructive. And there's drawings all over the wall. And did you notice, I mean, it went all the way up. So Yeah, and through the whole place. I mean, the entire room. And they're like, what is this? And he's like, oh, that's my home. That's Windermere. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. So it's Windermere completely made up and somehow... Whoever this kid is that did this drawing had somehow turned it into a reality. That was my thought, too. Because everything exactly on the pictures was Windermere. Right. The moon, the train in the sky. Yeah, the moon was exact. Yes, because that's the weirdest thing. But in Windermere, 
we have some creepy guy who's not the mage, but apparently a follower, who decides to kill every everyone except Trout's brother. And so they grab they grab Vogel and they grab Amanda. And they keep the witchy cuckoo <laughs> locked the, up. Yeah. And Amanda is like freaking out and Vogel is in no condition to even help. No. And so his battery's drained. It is. All of a sudden, you know, she starts sparking and she manages to electrocute the whole lot of the There's bad like five guys. of them and she yeah, she looks at uh Vogel and says She's it's like lunch, lunch time. and then he like yeah, re-energizes because he sucks all the stuff off. Mm-hmm. Because it was kind of sad because she's like, I'm so sorry. And he just gives her a thumbs up when she thought they were going to die. I really, truly believe they were going to kill Vogel. Thought- and I was so upset because I love Osric Chow. I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And so it was great that he didn't die. In fact, she was able to save him and everybody else because, and this was weird too, so they let the kid out. And he's he takes the keys and he lets out the witchy cuckoo, mm-hmm. which I feel has to be a thing because again, why else are you going to have that in there? Right. And because she kind of looks at him because she's not speaking any English, she's no. just kind of snarling. And she looks at them and ends up like running the other way. Well, on all fours. Right. Which is weird. So I'm like, what if somehow that's not a female? What if it's the boy that they've been looking for? That is somehow feral now. Could be. That's kind of a... Yeah, no, I hadn't even thought about that, but that's kind of an interesting take. I don't know. Somehow magic powers, able to make this whole world appear. Yeah. And then get, create a world so real that you've got caught up in it yourself. It's very intriguing. We'll find out on the next episode of Dirk Gently. Or yeah. within the next six. Yeah. Yes, because we're four episodes into ten, which is awesome. I'm so excited that this has happened, and Jess will be here, I'm hoping for the entire season, but we're going to be a little flexible with my maternity leave. Yes, so we'll see. There might be a wee babe also on the episode or two. Occasionally. So we hope you guys are enjoying this. Please don't forget to rate and review us on all the podcatchers that you're finding us on, especially iTunes, because that helps other fans of Dirk Gently find our show. And we do hope that you want to reach out and tell us your your theories, thoughts, your, observations. Your is there something fanfic? You, is there something that we've missed that you noticed? Ooh, that's good. We definitely want to know. So send something to Jess at Fangirl Zone, Sean at Fangirl Zone, or contact us at Fangirl Zone. And I will probably get a Dirk Gently email because I'm kind of slow like that, and that's what happens. So don't forget to check out www.fangirlzone.com. And we will soon have some merchandise up. We're working on our our artists who have done some awesome artwork for us. We're going to get that on some stuff. <laughs> stuff and things. Stuff and things. All right, everyone. For this episode of Dirk Gently, I am Sean Fangirl S. And Jess. And until next time.